John, I want to talk to you a bit about, um, you know, which some people may consider a targeted therapy as well, uh, which is PRT, peptide receptor radiotherapy. I mean, you were the first author in a very important paper, the Netter One paper. So can you tell us a bit about that? Tell the audience a bit about the treatment and uh, when you think it should be used? Sure. So most patients uh, with well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors uh, express uh, somatostatin receptors, specifically somatostatin receptor subtype 2. And so uh, attaching a radioisotope to the somatostatin analog is a means of delivering uh, radiation to the tumors. That's the underlying principle of the radio-labeled somatostatin analogs. And this has been a treatment that's evolved over several decades, uh, first with indium-111, which has a very weak cytotoxic effect, then yttrium-90, which has a relatively large particle range, and most recently, lutetium-177, uh, which is a beta-emitting isotope with a relatively intermediate particle range of about two millimeters and a good therapeutic index. Um, the data until recently were almost exclusively from large institutional series, sometimes with, with hundreds of patients, uh, showing fairly high response rates, ranging from about 20% uh, in, in mid-gut nets to about 40% in, in pancreatic nets. Um, of course, all patients with somatostatin receptor expressing tumors. The Netter 1 was the first randomized phase 3 trial of a radio-labeled somatostatin analog, specifically lutetium-177 dotatate. Uh, the drug was administered intravenously once every uh, eight weeks for four treatments. The population was patients with progressive mid-gut neuroendocrine tumors, patients whose tumors were progressing on uh, first-line octreotide, standard-dose octreotide. And they were randomized to receive lutetium dotatate versus high-dose octreotide on the comparator arm. Uh, the primary endpoint, uh, as you know, was PFS by Blinded Central Radiology Review. And uh, what the study showed was a, a very significant improvement in PFS. Uh, it was eight months with high-dose octreotide. It was not reached at the time of analysis with lutetium dotatate, and the hazard ratio was 0.21. Uh, this was obviously very statistically significant. Uh, at the same time, we did a preliminary analysis of overall survival. This is not the main overall survival analysis, but on preliminary analysis, there were nearly twice as many deaths on the octreotide arm versus lutetium. So early indications that it probably improves overall survival, but we have to wait for the final results. And then the response rate was uh, roughly 18% uh, uh, with lutetium. So uh, clearly evidence of activity in the mid-gut net population. And I think the combination of the Netter 1 study as well as... Uh, as single arm data, primarily from, from Erasmus Hospital in Rotterdam, uh, led to the approval uh, of lutetium dotatate, uh, not just in mid-gut nets, but in gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors uh, in the United States, as well as in Europe. Yeah, so it's been, a, it's been obviously a huge uh, leap in our uh, understanding of how we can treat these neuroendocrine tumors. So you talked a bit about the trial was done specifically in mid-gut neuroendocrine tumors. Do you think we need to do further trials in the other neuroendocrine tumors, specifically uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors or even bronchial neuroendocrine tumors? Or do you think we have enough data at this time that we'd be able to extrapolate to use PRT in these tumors? You know, that's, uh, that's, that's been a controversial question. I would say that uh, there's... There's almost certainly enough um, um, evidence based on the very long history of single arm data to say that uh, PRRT almost certainly works in the whole variety of nets that express somatostatin receptors, regardless of primary site, although the activity may be, may be different. But I'm glad that there is a randomized study being, um, uh, being uh, conducted, the COMPETE study, uh, which is looking at a slightly different radio-labeled SSA um, uh, uh, lutetium dota talk versus everolimus in non-functioning entopancreatic nets. So, so that'll be, I think, a, a, a good study to sort of um, give us early indications of how to, how to potentially sequence uh, treatments. We, we really haven't had too many studies, if any, in the neuroendocrine field comparing two active drugs. This will be one of the first. Um, and so I think that'll, that'll provide us with some important information. As far as selecting patients, uh, it's, it's really important to, to do have a good quality somatostatin receptor imaging um, and um, uh, make sure that all the tumors express somatostatin receptors. If you have a heterogeneous uptake, uh, often the tumors that are not expressing somatostatin receptors will be relatively aggressive, um, and so those would not be uh, appropriate patients uh, for PRRT treatment. I think uh, uh, 
what we're talking about with PRT is a second line and beyond treatment. Uh, sometimes there's temptation among patients or, or some practitioners to, to move it to the first line. I think that's appropriate only in very rare circumstances. Even though it's an effective treatment and well tolerated, there are risks with PRT. There's a, a roughly 2% risk of long-term bone marrow damage, myelodysplastic syndrome or leukemia. We need to be aware of that. So I don't think PRT is, is going to displace somatostatin analogs as a, as a first-line treatment, at least not in the near future, unless there's a, you know, a, a clinical trial that's, that's evaluating that. Um, but uh, certainly in second-line or beyond, 